Hi everyone, my name is Dmitru, I am an English tutor and a coach. In this short video, I want to help you a bit with the description of the photos in Duolingo English Test. I mean a written description, because there is also an oral description, but uh, by the way, I want to tell you that the, some main principles, they may be applied to both written and oral description. Remember this. Of course, speaking and writing they are as like as, you know, I don't know, a tortoise and an eagle, but some common basic principles of common sense and formal logic, they apply to both. So, if you improve in your writing at Duolingo, at the same time, I can say as a tutor that you're improving in your speaking. Okay, so I have opened randomly one photo. I haven't seen it before, I tell you honestly. This one was tortured by someone at real Duolingo. So this is an actual photo, not a fake or something, not from just from Google search. Somebody has been describing it thoroughly. So my friends, what can we write here? And what is the basic, uh, the main philosophy, the overall approach? I think that we should divide you, my audience now, into two large groups. The first one is comprises those guys who can type very fast, not looking at the keyboard. This is the one group of heroes. The second group, and I think it's a larger group, those who cannot. So I cannot, for example. Uh, if you can, of course you can produce more sentences. It's, you know, clear as a day. Duolingo loves when you write a lot. They state so explicitly, they, you know, they reveal it and it's not a secret. Because you are very pressed for time, so of course we can presume that the more you can produce within these limited, um, within this limited amount of time, the better speaker or writer you are. Okay, yes, we understand. However, there is such an aspect that when you write, not looking at the keyboard, very often you are producing a lot of mistakes. If it will be, I mean, forgotten, and uh, in your actual life when you write some emails or chats or so on. So, in Duolingo you understand, of course, it's not advisable to produce a lot of spelling mistakes. Some of them the system will recognize as typos, while others it will not. So, think about that even if you can type so fast, it's a good practice to look every, let's say, I don't know, five seconds to the screen. Oh, by the way, Duolingo forbids you not to look into the screen. So, if you type for one minute, just looking solely at the keyboard, you will have to reset the test, which is not a good idea. Yeah? So, please, from time to time, peep into the screen, and you will rejoice in your happiness. Um, and the second large group of guys, like me, and millions of others, who could not type so fast. Then, I recommend you to produce two sentences. I always say, from one to three sentences, uh, two is the golden middle, it's okay to get 110, 120 for your production, even more, depending on your own, uh, on the vocabulary in your answer. Yeah, one is not advisable, but allowed if you produce one good, long, clever sentence. It will give you more than 100. I tell you, three sentences are perfect if, of course, if they are. Uh, Let's say if they are up to the point, you know, if they're not gibberish or some gosh, if you write really what's going on here, three sentences, you will have, without mistakes, you will have 120, 130, and so on and so on. But let's think about two sentences, because uh, within 55 seconds, let's say, how much can you write? Uh, why I say 55? Because, of course, in theory you have 60, but you realize that the timer starts counting, yes? You look into this, you have insert, you're having certain stress. While your mind is operating upon what to write here, what to put this, you have already lost five, six, seven seconds. I don't know what to, even if you start typing immediately, like in this picture, la la la. Anyway, your mind has to process this image and it gives you a certain delay, but no problem. So we have 55, let's say 50 seconds. If you produce two seconds within this limit, it's perfect, I'm sure. At least most of you want, let's say, 120 for dealing, 125. Rarely somebody wants 130. Yeah, we realize that the ambition is to get 155. Yeah, I get it. But uh, usually colleges and universities require from you 115, 120, 125. So two sentences are enough for your production of, uh, let's say, 110, 115. And by my statistics, 
usually in 99% of cases your other sub scores are higher so it's okay to get 100 10, 15 at your production, it means that you will get your overall Duolingo 125 or 30. Okay, so I think you get it. Yes, two sentences are okay. If you want to produce four or five, as some maniacs do, okay, you'll be blessed and I'm happy for you, but I cannot. Okay, so what shall we write here? You understand that logical preference, uh, let's call it... Um, the formal logical, uh, not explosion, but focus here. So I focus like a logical thesaurus. Uh, the first sentence, of course, I try to produce the most important action, if there is an action in the photo. Here there is an action. Some ladies and men are posing for the, for, for the camera. It's like a festival. So, so there is an action, still action. The moment is captured. In some photos, there is no like action. For example, a cat is sleeping on the floor. Yes, he is sleeping, but there is no movement, there is no dynamics. So here there is some dynamics. They are posing. To, it's, it's very important, yes? So I try to capture the dynamics in my first sentence. Like, who is doing what? In my second sentence, depending upon the situation, I can describe the context, I can describe some dresses, I can describe you know, weather I don't recommend because it's so sometimes silly when guys, instead of describing um, the environment here, they start describing like in the background, I can see clear blue sky. Okay, very nice. And you get your 90 for the description because any child can write, I can see a clear blue sky. So congratulations, you have you have diminished your score. Of course, I'm joking a bit. You understand that we don't know the logic of Duolingo. There is no... some A lot of guys, they're asking for patterns and templates. I try to explain to them, there are, there are no templates and patterns for Duolingo. It's not IELTS or TOEFL. IELTS or TOEFL will forgive your templates. Duolingo may make you repass the test. It happened a lot of, not a lot of times, but sometimes with my students who love templates. There are no templates. Those silly templates, they don't work for Duolingo. Okay, so let's write our first sentence. By the way, I'm writing, and you please, you think about what you would write. It's even more important here and more fruitful than just to, you know, to observe my actions and, and say then criticize my English or something like that. So, okay, I'm sure that your introduction doesn't matter much. So, in this photo I can see, or this photo shows, this photo depicts, this photo features. It doesn't, you know, I don't give a rip about it, because I'm sure Duolingo has analyzed uh, hundreds of thousands of answers, and they are fully aware that any mentally retarded guy can cram, can learn by heart, those in this photo I can see, or there is, there are, something like that. So, don't worry about this. Start like as you can don't like don't worry so uh you're expect you are supposed to write something normal in the middle of your sentence not in the beginning so okay so in this photo oh uh, i'm sorry this is my like ukrainian um, uh in this image or just i can see or you can say here comma and off i go here i can see Several mm, beautifully clad ladies and males. Okay, we can say females and males, ladies and gentlemen. I just I show you the diversity in males posing for the photographer. Uh, in the street, yes. Uh, of course, in the street is not very creative. I agree with you. However, when you have fifty seconds, you know, here I can see several beautifully clad ladies and males. Oh, I'm sorry. Yes, this is a typo. But I'm sure the system would have recognized this typo. So, males posing for the photographer in the street. Okay. So the second one, our second circle of our mental formal like um, semantic explosion. Yes, our thesaurus. What is Number two, position number two impo of importance in this uh, photo. Yeah, uh, of course there is no surefire way uh, like answer, so we can describe some buildings in the background that they look like old style, vintage, and so on. La 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 architecture. Yeah, or we can describe uh, that probably there is it's a festival of some kind in some country. We don't know what country. And don't spend your mind, don't bother yourself trying to guess the country. It's Stupid, I think, losing your energy and time here. So, okay, let's describe the uh, those the building. Yeah, in the background, of 
course, while you're typing in the background, you're losing time, but we cannot, I think, evade. In the background, comma, mind you, they love comma here. There is, there are, depending on the number, yeah, be careful about this. There are several, we have already had several, yeah. There are, let's say, numerous, numerous, numerous vintage buildings or premises. No, let's say buildings. Of, um, we can say rena uh, Renaissance architecture, or if you're not sure about how to spell this Renaissance, Middle Ages is too much, maybe, yeah, of uh, classic, okay, let it be. Classic oi, architecture. Architecture. Be careful about your spelling, because otherwise it will spoil the whole broth. Uh, oh, classic architecture. Yes, and that's it, you see? I tell you, if you write like this, you will get 100 and more for your writing. It will give you 110, 115 for your production, because usually your speaking is much better than your writing uh, with 99% of candidates. It means that you will have your 120, 125 for your dueling. That's the whole philosophy of uh, this. If you have some better ideas about describing the sentence, please put your variants in the comments. I will be happy to to hear some, you know, some variants. It's, and not only I, you will help hundreds of guys. Okay, my dear viewers. If you need urgent assistance with your Duolingo preparation, like in one week, two weeks, three weeks, please contact me. I always put the contact details in the description to this video, as well as in the bottom of the screen. Uh, mind you, I cost money as a tutor, so please first uh, learn the price on my lessons at my website, which is given in the description, of course, and then contact me. So Because some guys, they want too much for nothing. It's not the case with me. Okay, dear friends, I wish success at Duolingo and see you in our next lessons.